<laughs> Welcome to the world of Hearthrod. I'm your host, storyteller and dungeon master, Bilbo. Uh, we finished up with our Saturday evening at Gen Con 2019. And uh, what is your name, buddy? I'm Alexander the Brave, great mage and warrior above all. Monster Slayer, Dragon Hunter, I will take over it all. All right, my grandson. So he <laughs> so had a good time uh, today. Uh, I'll give you our thoughts uh, and, uh, on Gen Con. We won't be doing a video tomorrow. This is our last one of the Gen Con. I will. Uh, he will uh, on his portal pass. Uh, but uh, we will be heading out tomorrow after. Tomorrow afternoon, early afternoon, after we have another four-hour session of D&D 5e, Legacy of Mana, uh, over at the Marriott. Uh, so we will not be making it over back to the convention center, uh, just because we want to get on the road and hopefully get to Wisconsin Dells uh, f for the evening, for Sunday evening. So it'd be nice if we can make that uh, trip. Uh, so uh, how did the day go? Uh, we started out... Bright and early this morning at 10 o'clock, uh, we started with uh, some Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, uh, Wake of Midgard, I think that's what it was yeah, called. And it was another bloodbath. Yep, so Cobalt Press, uh, you know, uh, it's Cobalt Press Room. So we played that adventure. It was a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, as he said, we were... We crushed it, the, yeah, the whole yeah. adventure. I, both him and I both had chances of dying, um, but luckily we were able to get healed back on up. Uh, we had a good... Because I was a paladin. He was a paladin. Plus a we had a good cleric in the group uh, that actually healed us. Uh, so that was uh, nice to have a cleric in the group that was healing us. Um, and yeah, we went through the adventure. It was a lot of fun. Good dungeon master. Uh, some good players. Yep. Two uh, Fireball users. Super Two proud players. of this guy. Um, just the whole weekend in the sense of just uh, how smart he is, even though he's not humble about it sometimes. Uh, and he just um, picked up a lot of games quickly, too, that we demoed. So we played that. I uh, hit the... Uh, um, the block party area, looking for some mac and cheese uh, with the wild boar, stood in line, and then they ran out. We were probably six. So, yeah, we were so close. So to it, to it. close. We were and waiting then, like 30 minutes for this one thing, and just, they start racing, and I'm like, no, no, no. So we ended up having pizza, pizza yeah. in a box, which was good. And some breadsticks. And breadsticks, which he liked. I wasn't a big fan. So then after that, uh, we had some time to kill before our next uh, D and D session. Uh, so we uh, played a few games. So go ahead, tell them about that. It's called Shadow of Brimstone. A good game. We didn't get it, but we did get this gear card. And it's a game where you take place as a Wild West character. It's so like there's a U.S. Marshal, which is what I played as in the demo. And I played solo, which was really hard. <laughs> yeah, I like him playing some solos. I had him play a couple of solos here at uh, the convention. One, to teach him, it's a lot, it's more fun and a lot easier with games where you have two or more players. And he discovered that quickly in that adventure. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the game's $100, so I told him he needs to put that on his Christmas list. Uh, because uh, we had a budget uh, that I was sticking to, which my wife would be very proud of, uh, that I did not pull out the credit card and swipe away uh, for multiple games, I guess. There. Yeah, there are a lot of games. Um, you could have just... So we also test played, or demoed, I should say, a game called Silver, a uh, card game, uh, which is almost like, a, it's, it is a lot of fun. Uh, it's like a memory game almost, um, but also trying to steal each other's cards. Uh, it's this whole um, a point system and uh, for you know not having werewolves attack your village. Uh, but uh, so we played around to that. 
uh, and that was $25. Uh, we probably would have got that. Uh, however, we found another game or two that we got. So then we went and we demoed a game. Go ahead, show Called it. Dragon Dice. So now we have Dice and Dragon. Dice and Dragons and Dragon Dice. Yeah, so we picked up both games that have the same titles, just reversed. Uh, and so the, um, I would say the one thing about the, what is it, the Dragon Dice. Dragon dice. Uh, it is a complicated dice game. Um, yeah, so you're battling against each other uh, with dice, multiple different dice that have different symbols on them. Uh, so you really kind of have to learn, l learn the symbols of the dice, and and play it. It's yeah. it's not an easy game. I will say that. Um, and so if and you, you got to build the perfect army. Yeah, I mean, well, I get lucky with dice yeah. too, but build armies with the dice that you have, and it's a dice collecting game, uh, which is kind of the. First, I think I've well, I'll take that back. There's some other dice yeah, collecting games. I actually yeah. have another one. Yeah, you have one. So I take that back. But these are different dice sizes too, which was yeah, uh, they you have know different HP and different values. So like the D10 is called the monster, and we actually weren't supposed to get an extra monster with the um, free die we got, but the dude gave me one. Yes, yeah, so we got away with that and uh, another die. Yep, yeah, and we I they even had a little gumball machine and uh, yes. picked out another die there too. So we picked up some a couple extra dice, got that game. It was forty dollars uh, for the starter. So um, bought that and then we got go ahead and lift at, that up. Buddy. At AEG Games, they have deals every day. Yeah. Every day, yeah, yeah. Yep. And we got Unicornus Knights. Yeah, so we grab that. Uh, it's up to a six-player game, uh, so perfect family game. Uh, and we will. Uh, uh, it was twenty bucks, so I'm like, hey, let's get it. It's a big, big game. A lot of stuff in it. Multiple characters, and it is yeah, like basically protecting the princess. And I was like, well, for or twenty, twenty dollars, uh, let's go ahead and get it uh, for the family and. Uh, Try to convince the wife and daughters uh, and my son to play the game with us uh, when we get home. Uh, then after that, uh, did we? Did you test play any other games? I'm trying to remember. We looked at several other games today, just kind of walking by and. No, I actually didn't. Okay, so yeah, that's the ones we played. And yeah, then we yeah looked around. We looked at some other games and stuff. But then, uh, and then we went to go play um, Tower of Gax, uh, first edition, very chaotic, crazy game, uh, where you're just gonna die. Uh, the dungeon master tries to kill you, and they have a board on how many uh, people have been killed for each day, how many TPKs have been done. Uh, so it was fun. It's a two-hour uh, game, uh, playing a half-orc. And to be honest, the great thing is we survived for an hour and a half. Yeah, for two rooms. Uh, so, uh, which was good. I mean, we saw a ton of characters. Bringing a second character, Cleric, who had a zero AC, which is the best AC in uh, first edition. Yeah, so we don't need to go into that. So we had first edition, this first crack at first edition, and... Um, and I remember Thacko and all that. I'm like, oh, I forgot all about Thacko. And I don't want to go back to Thacko. Uh, but it was fun to play in, and I would play in it again. Um, he does it all the time. If, if I try to kill everyone, I just have to send the Goblin Raiders at them, and I could kill three characters like with that. I've, did, I've almost done it before. I left a character at 1 HP, and he just chill-touched everyone. <laughs> So now, so some some of my thoughts and some of my hint, tips, maybe, um, as we've experienced Gen Con, um, and yeah, you can go out of the video if you want <laughs> and look at uh, this is, uh, back in the dragon, dragon dice game. So he wants one, to. Yeah, and we're gonna, I will actually be playing that on my channel. Shout out to Board of Us. All right, so we're gonna play that again here in a little bit uh, tonight. I know. It. And uh, don't open that. And uh, so we're going to play that in a little bit, and so he doesn't distract me. So, once again, back to my thoughts of Gen Con. Being the first time ever at Gen Con, 
uh, it's just kind of coming from uh, experience, my experience just with gaming and such. And uh, I'm a super a backer Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter person. And I've been at conventions, of course, back home in Minneapolis, but haven't been to one in years um, where I usually just would uh, run games, DM a lot, uh, being invited for that. So my thoughts, Gen Con. So first, let's kind of go with, for us, we stayed about 30 minutes out of, uh, away from the convention, which, well, is 30 minutes to not gaming, 30 minutes of driving, so it depends on how much you like driving. Uh, some traffic wasn't that bad. Today, of course, the weekend traffic's, you know, it's perfect, no big deal, but during rush hour stuff, uh, we had that. Um, yeah, I don't know uh, if I'd want to stay uh, downtown. I mean, it was more expensive, way more expensive, uh, staying closer to the convention center uh, than staying 30 minutes out. So it's a big savings, but just the, uh, you know, the thing of driving. And uh, I don't mind driving, but it's still kind of a pain. It might have been nice to stay close by. Um, so that's one thing. You can kind of look at that. Parking, I wasn't, I didn't have any issues. I was able to park literally every day across the street from the convention center. Yes, $22 a day or maybe $18 a day we got out of it. If we got out of there like around eight o'clock at night, which uh, we did tonight. And I think we did that on Thursday night too. So once again, four days of that adds up $100 there. But it is what it is. Um, I would have still had a car, and I'm sure even if I was staying at a hotel close by, they probably wouldn't have been charging me uh, to park there, even though I'm staying at the hotel. I don't know. I have to look at that part. Uh, Food-wise, the food trucks were great. I like that. Uh, having all those food trucks as options. I love food trucks. Uh, even us trying to go back <laughs> to the same one. But the food was so good. So no issues there. I thought the concession stands inside, uh, they ran really smooth. I was able to get uh, iced coffee a couple times, uh, just as a pick-me-up, and never really had to stand in line, and uh, that was nice. The cafe area, uh, people sitting on the floors, chairs, but everybody's pretty, really polite. I wouldn't say pretty, really polite about joining them at tables and we lucked out every time and found a table to sit down and uh, eat food. So uh, I didn't have to sit on the floor at all. Uh, and that would have been uh, seeing me coming up be like a walrus. So it was good that I didn't have to play the walrus game. And uh, so that, yeah, that was good and no complaints there. Uh, really the organization, the staff there seemed really good. A uh, tip. Uh, if you're waiting for a will call, um, and we only had to do that because we had our packets sent to us. Uh, we only do it, we signed up for a game literally a couple days before uh, for the Tower of Gax. Um, as one of my players was joining and I saw that, we could get in. So we signed up for that. And uh, so we st uh, stood in the will call last night, uh, probably 10 to maybe it was 15 minutes or so it wasn't that long uh compared to during the day when i saw the lines they were crazy so definitely tip go at night not as not as crazy lines uh for that uh, but i would say you know pay the extra five or ten dollars and have your packet and everything shipped to you like we did other than that one game because that was nice we never had to wait in that will call line for any of our stuff. We just had our tickets, we had our badges, no issues there. So that's a tip, pay the extra five, ten dollars It's way worth it. Let's, some of the lines I saw for will call it just crazy. Unless you like standing in lines, I don't, I hate it. Uh, so uh, what else? Uh, the Let's go with the vendors. So the vendors, crazy amount of vendors i mean it was overwhelming wouldn't you say buddy just um and a crazy amount of gaming and geek merchandise and so many i mean there were so many dice 
stores there it was I was selling dice it was just nuts and uh I mean and just everything I, I surprised Wizards of the Coast isn't there to have any kind of representation however well you know there's tons of people selling their stuff there so and there's tons of people playing Dungeons and Dragons there so maybe they they don't need to worry about that uh with Gen Con but It'd been cool to see uh, uh, their presence there, but it's fine. Uh, and so, one of my one of my th thoughts here is if you have a booth and you're selling a game that kind of no one knows really anything about, um, really, I would recommend having you know the demos. Uh, with for us, any game that had a demo, we were pl and playing some of them, the ones we wanted to play. And a lot of times, if we really liked the game, we bought it. And uh, I mean, so that's that's the thing. Versus some other games I saw, and there's no demo. I'm like, I don't know what this game is about, and just kept walking. And I was like. You know, see, sometimes where you go by a vendor and there's no one there talking to them and they're just sitting there. And I'm talking about the ones that have games. And these are people that have created games. And why not have a demo out so people will stop and see and touch and ask questions? We asked tons of questions to any of the, um, the vendors that uh, were doing the games. And... Uh, and that it was helpful. And, uh, you know, we all, I only had a couple people try to hard sell me, uh, which I don't like and I don't buy. Uh, so uh, that wasn't a big deal. But, yeah, it was really cool to see all the vendors. Uh, in a sense of playing games. Uh, so the one thing I wish I didn't do and probably didn't need to do um, because we signed, I signed up for games where we had a couple games every day, or at least, you know, one game um, every day. But usually we had two games a day that we were signed up for. And then I also bought uh, the generic tickets, which we didn't need to use, and we didn't use any of them, um, purely because we were able to play demos, and, uh, and they were for free. So, you know, we're playing 30-minute, hour-long demos of, of different games, uh, and that would eat up time before we would have to go to our next event. So it, that, that was a lot of fun. And uh, so I, I probably won't buy generic tickets uh, if we come back uh, after we move out west and uh, maybe make a flight out here. Um, but I would... But I, yeah, he flies for free. His dad's an air, airline guy, and to be honest, he could fly free maybe with Jared. Uh, and so, uh, so uh, with that, you know, I, I definitely won't buy generic tickets, uh, just in the sense that I think I just play demos as long as I'm signed up for games. And uh, that's the other key thing is if you're gonna go to Gen Con, if you're committed. Do it right, you know, sign up before they release the games. And that day when those games go out uh, to sign up, you got to be on it and sign up for your games because they fill up quickly. And and if you don't do it right away, uh, you may not get in the games. And then I guess that's where generic tickets would help. But And I thought we would use them, and I didn't have to, uh, purely because... We, Every, we played, played so many demos. Hall. We played, yeah, in the exhibit hall. We played tons of of, of games or asked. Uh, and the ones that we didn't play or watch people play, ask questions of the vendors and such. Uh, and that gave us a good idea of, hey, let's put this on the Christmas list. Or B, let's buy it. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So uh, that was a, f a lot of fun. Uh, the other thing, and this is for you gamers out there, you guys that played any games, whatever, Dungeons and Dragons or any games, you know, 
when I see like last night, um, just a ton of people sitting down on the floor, um, you know, just, I mean, just a ton. And now if you're with a group and you're talking and having fun or playing even a game on the floor, I think that's cool. Or if you need a break, just some, hey, I need some me time, alone time, I'm all for that. But I saw so many people sitting down, I mean, a ton. And I'm like, why aren't they playing a game? Why aren't, why aren't you demoing a game play, that's what we're here for this is a gaming convention and yeah i know there's a lot of other things that go on at gen con with all the cosplay and there's uh the movies and all that kind of stuff i understand that completely but it's a gaming convention we if we weren't eating <laughs> we were either playing a game walking to go play a game or an exhibit hall looking at games and demoing games oh tons of demos so yeah so i mean we stayed busy the entire time we were there and i felt like i got my money's worth even even though i'm sitting on some tickets you know those generic tickets uh that i we didn't have to use i'm still like it's okay i got my money's worth i'm happy we got tons of games in uh, and as, if we do come back, and we brought some games out. Yeah, and yeah, and, and actually, yeah, we purchased games. I mean, so we got a lot of games that we'll get to play, and a lot of games that would be on our Christmas list. Uh, so we can grab those. So those are just my thoughts. Uh, I hope to come back uh, to Gen Con. Uh, maybe actually uh, run some games. I was going to that was kind of my plan going in uh to gen con this year was gonna play or run some sessions for a variety of vendors uh that i you know support um however this guy wanted to come with and uh so i was kind of uh i'm like yeah it's perfect take the grandson with um we'll have a great time and we had a great time right you had a great time mm -hmm. a lot of fun Yes, totally, awesomely, ultimately, I am the king of the And yeah, and we, he had a blast, super impressed with his play, uh, his role playing, and uh, strategy. strategy, and a lot of vendors uh, were super impressed with his questions and how he picked up games, which I know, of course, uh, he does. Uh, picked up their Just games the I'll pick it up real, fast. really quick. He didn't even need in their sense of rule books, but he just asked great questions of these vendors. They were super impressed uh, with his questions and uh, how he picked up every game uh, that we sat down or stood stood there and played. Uh, that was a that was a proud Papa moment uh, for me. I was definitely proud of him up this weekend. And uh, with that. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Remember, it's cool to be a geek. Pass it on. And portal on. Have a good night.